we will eat both of your arms and then both of your legs. And then we will eat your face right off of your head. You will be this armless, legless, faceless thing, won't you? Rolling down the street like a turd in the wind. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Cosmic Wonder with the early ass breakdown. That's what I'm talking about. Get over to Cosmic Wonder. Subscribe, hit the bell, and tell them Tyrone Magnus sent you. Now, we need to find out what we missed in this trailer breakdown. What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder and we finally got the first teaser trailer for Venom Let There Be Carnage and we actually did get a look at Carnage. Not going to lie, I was kind of worried that they weren't going to show us in the teaser trailer. But no need to worry because, of course, we yes, saw Carnage. And we'll get to that in a bit. We're going to break this down shot by shot, scene by scene. And quick reminder, I'm giving away a Marvel Legends Stormbreaker. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to me and subscribe to my other channel, Cosmic Culture. Link down below. So Sony does this thing where they kind of put a teaser in front of the teaser trailer. They kind of give you a mm. glimpse of what's to come in the yeah. trailer. We'll skip that and just start with the beginning. The trailer takes us back to California where we join Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock and Vin. We're taken back to the same apartment that Eddie Brock had from the very first movie. The first thing that we see is a sign that says, Rules, No Eating People. And this seems to be written on a pizza box. Venom has kind of become notorious for eating people, and just simply wanting to eat in general, which is what we see during yeah. this opening scene here. Venom, not Eddie Brock and Venom, but Venom's personality himself seems to have grown. It looks like he's grown pretty accustomed to Earth as he is kind of doing things on his own while Eddie Brock just sits there and is kind of annoyed. Venom, since he can't eat people, is making breakfast out of normal things, although we do see some chickens walking around inside of the apartment, yeah. and these could very well be for Venom to eat later. Venom is enjoying some music as he makes himself some food, and he turns up the volume on an old Sony radio, in which, of course, Venom is a Sony mm. property, so if there's going to be a radio, it's Makes definitely sense. going to be a Sony brand. Mm. However, Venom doesn't exactly have the best control over everything, so he kind of makes a mess, makes an awful breakfast, and most importantly, kind of annoys Eddie Brock. Now, in the scene where Eddie is sitting down at the table and Venom asks for ketchup, Eddie has something in his hand. It's hard to make out, and then it gets covered in ketchup, but this could be be important. It is red, so it could symbolize the Carnage symbiote, but we'll get back to that in a bit. Mm. And he goes back to the same grocery store where they gave us that famous like a turd in the wind scene from the first Venom film. And he says hi to Mrs. Chen, and so does Venom, and we actually see Venom wave. However, what's very interesting is, it doesn't sound like Mrs. Chen actually hears Venom, as Eddie has to actually tell her Venom says hi. However, we do see a symbiote tentacle reach out of Eddie's back as he says hi. I was thinking maybe she, yeah, that she right. sees him, but doesn't hear him. We then cut to Cletus ah, Cassidy. Ah, that makes the sense because he was talking in his head. He doesn't actually have it yet. The last time we saw him was in the Venom that post credit scene where he said, when he gets out, there will be carnage. Now, the trailer shows us two different facilities. They show us a maximum security prison, and they also show us the Ravencroft Institute for the Criminally Insane. And it's probably safe to assume that Cletus Cassidy has been in both of these facilities. We cut to Cletus inside of a prison cell where there are tons of different writings and carvings in the wall. He's drawn a bunch of different monster faces. Some could even be symbiotes. It is possible that he saw Venom or another symbiote on TV from the first film. We see writings on the wall that say things like sweet death. And if we look right to the right of Cletus Cassidy, one carving even looks like Groot. And it looks like he's actually writing something on a card that looks fairly similar to the card that Eddie was holding in the first scene in his apartment. Now the card had red lines scribbled all over it, which is obviously reflective and symbolic of carnage, although he doesn't have the symbiote at this time, but it still has to mean something that we'll find out during the movie. But it is very apparent that Cletus Cassidy did send this to Eddie I'm because in this one scene where he smashes a spider, we can see this card very clearly, and we can see that Cletus kind of draws all around it. Now, the next scene is of Eddie Brock visiting Cletus Cassidy in the prison, so that could have been a letter to Eddie stating that he is on death row. He's <laughs> going to be put to death soon. We hear Cletus say, I've been thinking about you, Eddie, because you and I are the same. Every decision we ever make. Who do 
we leave behind and how do we leave them? Waiting in the darkness for the rescuer that never comes. Welcome back, Eddie Brock. It's been a long time. I missed you. And Woody Harrelson does a really good job at sounding very, very creepy and insane. And let's just take a second to acknowledge and appreciate the fact that that horrible red wig is gone from the post credit <laughs> scene of Venom. <laughs> Cleo yeah. Cassidy now has some relatively normal red hair. But there are some very important scenes going on here while Cletus is talking to Eddie. We see Eddie going through some paper. The Daily Bugle is on his computer in the background, and these papers seem to be drawings from Cletus Cassidy. Now, we obviously know that Cletus gets out of prison, so the trailer could be jumping around different points of time in the movie. So Eddie could be going over these papers and drawings after Cletus already escapes. And we can actually see in the paper that Eddie is holding a cathedral. And this scene is actually going to be later visited by Venom and presumably Carnage. We later see Venom jump on top of the cathedral. Almost looks like metal pole. rows now, of teeth on his desk in that basket. See? For Cletus being in jail. Just he was a up. mass murderer and it seems very public that he's about to be put to death. We see Stephen Graham's character holding a newspaper and his character was unknown to us at the time but it seems like he's just going to be playing a detective. He could have been on the Cletus Cassidy case as he's reading a newspaper that says the hidden victims of Cletus Cassidy and as he's reading the article it looks like he's getting very very upset. Most likely thinking of all the victims of Cletus Cassidy and how he probably couldn't stop him before he got to those victims. Now when Cletus is talking to Eddie about people they've left behind and how they leave them, they show us the Ravencroft Institute and they show us a woman. This woman is most likely Frances Barrison, a.k.a. Shriek. Shriek had been reported to be in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and considering the way her eye looks, I'm definitely saying this is her. During the Maximum Carnage storyline where Carnage violently escapes, he comes across Shriek, who wished to join him, so he freed her and the two of them set out on a massive killing spree together. Now, the trailer implies that there could be some sort of a connection between Cletus and Shriek, but it's unsure if this connection was formed before they both got into the Institute or in the Institute. But more on that in just a second. We see Cletus about to be put to death. They're about to inject him with the poison that kills him. Or at least should kill him. And speaking yeah. of the victims I was mentioning before, it looks like a lot of their families are actually watching him be put to death. However, that doesn't gotcha. exactly work out for them or for anybody else in this facility. We can see the poison go into his body, but right before it enters, we actually see some red liquid come out, which we could assume is blood, but I actually believe this is the Carnage symbiote saving Cletus it. Cassidy from the yep. poison. It's unclear at this point how exactly Cletus gets the symbiote, but it does sort of appear like it's already inside of him, yeah. and it's reacting to this poison not so well. And this yeah. is probably what causes Carnage to be unleashed. Yes. It seems like what Whatever facility they were at seems to be destroyed. And in the flames of this destruction, we can actually see two people walking out. And I'm assuming that this is actually going to be Cletus slash Carnage and Francis slash Shriek. Now, they might have tried to put Cletus to death in a security prison, and then he escapes and goes to the Ravencroft Institute to save Shriek. Because judging by the gates, it does seem like what is on fire is the Ravencroft Institute. And since Cletus was talking about the people that they left behind, it would make sense that he would go back and get Shriek. Now, in the comic, Shriek can generate sound waves that are super powerful, and she uses them as blasts. And we can sort of see that as she's trapped inside of this cell, screaming, and everything is sort of flying around. And then after this, we see the scene where Cletus Cassidy, via the Carnage symbiote, is breaking out of the prison. Carnage destroys some police cars, he destroys some helicopters, and then we finally get our first full look at Carnage. Now, we get the title card, and then we get a scene with Eddie Brock and Mrs. Chan, and she says that the chocolate shipment hasn't come in yet and this of course is for Venom. Mm. He loves chocolate but Eddie says we had a deal and she says what are you going to stop protecting me? So the deal was clearly you give me chocolate and I'll protect you from all of the people that come in here. Venom asks to eat Mrs. Chen and Eddie says no you can't eat her but again she can't hear Venom so it only seems right. like people can hear Venom when the symbiote has fully taken over Eddie Brock. Now the very last scene is of Carnage at the cathedral. Now the cathedral probably has some connection to Cletus Cass past, but it also may go on to become the cult of Null. Null was an eldritch god
god of darkness, and he was the creator of the symbiotes. In the cult of Null, the members worshipped Null and the symbiotes. Now, I don't think Never Null got was going to be showing up, but perhaps Carnage himself could get the some Lord. followers, and the cult of Null, or the cult of Carnage, could be established. But that was our first look at the teaser trailer for Venom, Let There Be Carnage. What did you think about this specifically? <laughs> did you like how Carnage looked? I, for one, am actually pretty satisfied with how Woody Harrelson is playing Cletus Cassidy. I think he's doing a great job, and I think the movie is actually going to be rather good. I do like how Carnage looked. But let me know your thoughts down below. Don't oh, forget to subscribe looked. so you can stay up to date on all of the latest... He looked more menacing. Like Carnage news. He looked beefier. Like he looked video, more menacing than I'm used to seeing Instagram in the comic Twitter. books, or at least always, you so when I was watching. collecting, Wolf Wolf. you know. Thank you very much, Cosmic Wonder, helping us out with that, so... Learned a few more things. Shriek is going to be in this, most likely. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Well, folks, let me know if there was anything uh, missed in this. I know there's several different breakdowns all over the internet right now. So uh, let me know what else I should be looking for when I watch the trailer again. Uh, thank you for being here. 10 million subscribers. Woo!